What's going on friends? Harley Davidson motorcycles have a maintenance schedule just like any other piece of machinery out there. Although with Harley Davidson's there are some things that they don't list in the manual. They're not really recommended anywhere to check or change but these are some things you really want to keep an eye on depending on which model you ride before you have a problem or even worse a catastrophic failure. Now every Harley Davidson motorcycle needs the basic maintenance needs, cleaning your air filters, changing your oil, changing your brake fluid, take a wrench, go over the whole bike, make sure everything's tight, but there are some more serious in-depth items that you really want to keep an eye on and you really want to be aware of to where you basically don't get caught with your pants down having a problem or the bike just completely shelling out depending on what it is and this does vary between the different engines and the different years of motorcycle. Guys if you enjoyed today's video please don't forget to hit that like button and consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't done so already. Now as many of you are probably aware Harley-Davidson really doesn't issue recalls for basically what we could call defects and foul ups by engineering in the factory when it comes to the engine. Now they will do a recall if there is an issue related to something like a safety item like your brakes, your bearings, anything that could basically cause a crash but if it just causes the motor to blow up yeah, they'll fix it under warranty or if you're out of warranty you're on your own. So let's start off with the Evo. Evos, very reliable, excellent engines but the one major kind of maintenance item that always should have been listed is that you need to change those lifters out about 40,000 miles. Evos have a very harsh push rod angle and it's very very rough on the lifters and more often than not you're already starting to have signs of a lifter issue roughly about 40,000 miles. Now once again this isn't every Evo. There are some Evos out there that have never had lifters in them, got 100,000 miles and never had a problem but most Evo engines definitely tend to need a set of lifters about 40,000 miles. Now it is definitely to your benefit to go ahead if you're getting close to 40,000 miles just go ahead and swap in a new set of lifters just to be on the safe side. Because the last thing you want is a lifter failure, wipe out lobes on the cam. That could be, that's going to be even more expensive than just putting in a brand new fresh set of lifters at roughly about 40,000 miles on your bike. Now when it comes to twin cams you already know what I'm going to say. You definitely want to look at the cam chain tensioners on it. If you're running an 88, you still have the spring tensioners, go ahead and get in there and inspect those at 40,000 miles and if they are the spring tensioners, go ahead and put a fresh set in there. Don't even mess around with it. Now if you do have a newer twin cam that has the hydraulic tensioners, those tend to go for about 50,000 miles. They say 50,000 but realistically I like to look at them about 30,000 miles. Go ahead and put in a fresh set of new hydraulic tensioner pads at about 30,000 miles. Now once again they're not always wore out at 30,000 miles but if you're going to get in there go ahead and change them. That way you can guarantee yourself another 30,000 miles or beyond. Now every engine's different and twin cam engines are really strange about their tensioners. Some of them last 100,000 miles, some of them go out at 30. But either way, it's to your benefit to go ahead and get those changed out so you know for peace of mind you have a fresh set in there and you're not going to end up shelling the engine by having those little particles rolling around in there or one of them coming apart, plugging your oil passages and shelling your engine. Now for the Milwaukee 8, we really haven't seen any issues with the tensioner shoe on it. I know everybody probably has a little PTSD from the twin cams knowing that it has a tensioner pad in there but so far those seem to be pretty good so I haven't really seen any issues there yet. Now as far as the big twins go when it comes to the Evo check out your lifters. Obviously with the twin cam you're going to want to keep an eye on your cam chain tensioners. That's just always been kind of no knowledge out there but it is not listed anywhere in any of the books that as a maintenance item that you need to keep an eye on and be aware of. That's just kind of come down through basically failures and bike night conversations and now through the internet. So another good maintenance item that you really want to be aware of is oil coolers. I, we've talked a lot about oil coolers. They're one of the best things you can do for your Harley but when you go to change oil on your bike do you actually undo your lines and drain your oil cooler out? It's not a bad idea. It's not a hundred percent necessary if you're very good about changing your oil on your motorcycle but it's just something that I've always liked to do 
would be go ahead, undo the lines, and get that all the oil out of the oil cooler because, well, I'm kind of a perfectionist when it comes to maintenance. I want to make sure I get as much oil out of that bike as possible because when you're changing oil on your bike, you're still going to have a little bit of oil left inside the oil cooler. Now, getting that little bit out of there, does it really make a whole lot of difference with a whole new, with a fresh oil change? Probably not, but just something I like to do. If you're not really good about changing your oil and you accumulate a lot of miles on your bike and you've never actually drained your oil cooler out, make sure you get all the old oil out of it so it's not mixing with the fresh oil. Over time, it may actually become necessary to actually remove the oil cooler and clean it in a sonic washer, parts cleaner, whatever, and then run a little low pressure air through it to get it all dried out before you start running oil through it back into the bike. And obviously with the oil cooler, I know adding an oil cooler to the bike is adding more connections and just more potential for leaks. So obviously you're gonna wanna recheck all your connections at each oil change. That's just part of a good maintenance regimen is to go ahead and drain that oil cooler and then when you go back over it, Make sure all those lines and connections are tight instead of waiting until you have a leak or an issue with it. A very important item to check on your Harley is definitely check your rubber motor mounts, especially on the Touring Bikes 2008 and earlier before the frame redesign. If you guys have never heard of the Harley Wobble, it is a pretty scary thing. Now, there's a lot of theories out there as to what actually causes it, but it could be your swing arm bushings, which are rubber, and also the engine mounts themselves, because when those get old, deteriorate, they get hard, they crack, they break, it basically allows everything to shift and flex, including the swing arm, and this could really be a dangerous situation if you don't address it. It's better to catch it in the garage than to figure out about it out on the road when you have a wobble or any kind of high speed, tank slapper, whatever you want to call it, that may not end well for you. Now one other good thing you could do with your Harley is to add the catch can or go to an atmospheric breather because as we know all your crankcase ventilation goes through the heads back in behind the air cleaner so it could be reburned in the engine, all that oil, all that nastiness basically ends up on top of your pistons and you get that wonderful carbon black coating. Well, over time, that can cost you horsepower, and also the more carbon buildup you get on the top of your pistons, that's gonna, that can lead to detonation as that carbon gets hot and starts to glow. You can start having your engine ping. Now, one way to combat that is to definitely go to a catch can or external breather, but I understand not all of us want to do that or have any desire to rig something like that up, but if you're not going to, you really need to clean the top of your pistons every now and again to blow some of that carbon off. Yeah, I know you can go right open down the road, knock some of it off that way, but before you do an oil change, squirt some top cylinder cleaner in there. A good cleaner like Amsoil's Power Foam or go with some Sea Foam. Squirt that in there the night before you're going to change your oil. Let it sit overnight. Put your spark plugs back in. Fire your bike up. Run the crap out of it. Warm it up real good and then change your oil. The reason why you want to do that before you change your oil is because there's just always a chance that some of that cleaner could get past the rings. Maybe not enough to make a difference, but it's better to be safe than sorry because you really don't want to contaminate your new oil. That will help keep the top of your pistons just a little bit cleaner if you're not running an external breather. So guys, these are just some really basic things about Harley Davidson's that really aren't in the manual. You're not going to find these little things anywhere and you really don't even realize that they're an issue until you start to have a problem. The whole idea of maintenance really is to prevent a problem. So why wait until there's a problem and the bike's down or you're looking at a major repair? It's better to do these things now than only learn about it at the time you're facing a huge bill to get the bike fixed. But anyhow guys, that's all I've got for you this week. If you guys enjoyed the video, please don't forget to hit that like button and consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't done so already. But anyhow, guys, until next week, you guys stay safe on the streets, ride smart, dodge those cars, and I'll catch you back here next week with a brand new video. Thanks for watching.